Oh. Okay. We in here tonight, okay? We are in here tonight. Ooh, let me fix the camera. Because you know. full meal to discuss on today so if you're with me if you're checking and if you're interested in today's topic you definitely want to stay tuned because it's going to be a good one but when you guys are coming in i want you guys to let me know where you're from where you're tuning in um if you're sipping on anything let me know i'm not sipping on anything so it is what it is sis. because i have a lot of information for you all and you know, as we settle in, as we kiki, as we get together, definitely give this video a thumbs up if you like this information. There's going to be some tea spilled up in here a little bit. The last live stream I did, you know, it was it was a good one. Okay, so big, big, big things. So again, as you come on in, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know where you're from. I am going to have a Q&A segment in um, at around the 30 minute mark. So I'm gonna be on that clock. I'm gonna be watching the clock because we got a lot to discuss um, But also how is everybody doing like it's been a lot to process these last few weeks since I did my last live We all know everything that is going on. I know the presidential debate is going on tonight and I would be remiss in the process of talking about negotiating I do not want you all to ever feel like you have to negotiate your value and your contribution in this presidential election coming in November. So if you have not done so, please register to vote, okay? There are several ways to vote in this upcoming election. Um, if you need assistance, there are options for that. Mail-in ballots, ab ballots, absentee ballots, you know, if you want to go to the polls, but please know all of your options i have some links in the description box when we all vote.org i also have vote.org again if you want to do your application for the mail-in ballot absentee ba ballot there's going to be information there and again as we move into um a little bit closer to the election i'm definitely going to have more information on my instagram okay i'm going to the polls make sure that you are safe okay plan to go early and if it's anything like it was in previous ele like big elections so if you um are someone who is relying on public transportation or if you are going to be riding with someone carpool consider that um consider your options go early okay go early but uber and lyft they usually do like little promotions so stay tuned and you know just check everything the night before let me make sure i'm getting all the um we got georgia in the building we got charlotte in the building um hey beautiful thank you so much how you doing miss love and i want to give a shout out to everybody here and please do not um don't sleep on that um that thumbs up button so definitely uh you know let me know uh let me know when you are um let, well let me know when you come in and also don't forget to thumbs up beautiful okay hello taste me okay so this is it's wonder it's wonderful it's live hey pink from sequoia louisiana okay you always giving us the real now this one so i'm gonna let you guys choose do you want the tea first or do you want me to get straight into the business because I'm, 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 I'm always give you the tea but you know do you want me to go straight into the business give you the in the info or do you want me to give you the tea let me know Y'all want tea or you want business first? But you know, I always got a little story for you. Hmm. So, oh, and okay, a lot of people are saying tea. I might do a little mix because you know I I um I anticipated that it could be a little bit skewed with the uh with the information, but okay, here's what I'm gonna tell you. We're gonna do it just like this. The goal of this entire live stream is so that we can talk about negotiating so that you are achieving a higher quality of life. So higher quality of life is not just wrapped up into what you make. It's about the opportunities that you create for yourself, that you pursue so that you can have peace, you can have financial stability, you can have freedom, 
okay to be able to you know make a certain living that affords you more time you know when you meet certain people and you know they're i mean they spread themselves thin amongst several jobs think about how you want to work yourself out of that routine and you want to own and maintain more of your own time for your personal self that's that self-care i like that we're seeing a shift in the narrative where we are seeing black women the imagery surrounding the black woman even though we, we are enduring a very, a very, very challenging time right now. We see more women who are being more open and more welcoming about the aspect of pursuing luxury, of just being comfortable and understanding that you too can obtain that. And it's also a huge part of that is how you negotiate, how you make uh, opportunities for yourself and how you, um, how comfortable you are stating your worth. Because, okay, around here, we don't, I don't convince somebody my worth. I know myself. I know my worth. I'm solid on that. I don't convince you. It's about, do you see it? If you don't, we can move on to the next. And it's also being of the mind frame that regardless, these opportunities are not like going to pass you by. You're not missing out on anything. So if someone doesn't see it for you, there's another brand, there's another company, there's another opportunity that awaits for you. Okay. We have, is that you're here in the building? So, okay. We're at the five minute mark. Well, a little over the five minute mark. So let's just get right into it. Two things, I'm gonna be talking about the corporate space and the social media space. So when I was working in pharma, I just wanna let you know how corporate is set up so that white men, they prevail. Like, they can be underqualified and they can still prevail. They can make more than you even though they are unqualified, they are underqualified, but they will be overpaid. So when I was in pharma, there was a candidate who they were you know we were interviewing for and we, we were interviewing for and we did a, a group interview setting and you know during the interview you know how um you know how they do this i'm not even gonna hold you we're not gonna we're not gonna be uh coy about the reality so you know how a candidate can come in and they could talk a really good game they know all the right things to say but on paper honey we have questions you didn't even finish college but you're, interview you're interviewing for a position to work amongst people like myself who have higher education, degree, advanced degrees. So that was a mess within itself. So keep that in mind. But I wanna let you know that in corporate spaces especially, there are people who are highly trained to make you second guess your value. There are people who are working just as hard as you to be able to articulate and communicate your value. There are people who are trying to convince you that you're over, you're, you're asking for too much. You're over, you're asking right, right. And they use the language, they look at your resume, they look at your CV, they look at your experience and they try to tell you, you know what, but well, we can do this. Don't settle, don't settle. Because when I was in pharma and I was thinking about everything that I had to do, the way that my interview was set up, the way that they grilled me, okay? The way that they went hard on my ass, spared, spared, spared me not at all. And then the way that they interacted with this white man who didn't even have a degree, okay? So keep that in mind. But the bigger thing in the social media space, you can negotiate an entire salary. You hear people talking about, I just, um, you know, um, I signed a deal for some several tens of thousands of dollars, some signed deals for $100,000 or greater. And I want you to know, you can do that too. It's all about how you position yourself, how you approach the process of negotiating your value. And so let's be very clear. Let's start working on trying to land brand deals, jobs that can provide us a salary, a, a, a very much livable salary and wage so that we are, we're not shortchanging ourselves. So when the girls say that they just signed a deal and they got like, let, I'm gonna throw a number out there. Let's say that the girls, signed, they say they signed a deal and it's for like $50,000 and that's just one company. That's just one brand and it is possible. So what I want you to do, because when you're thinking about brand deals on a scale of a salary as robust as like, and some people may not think 50000 is robust, but for one particular brand deal, if you're getting paid $50,000, honey, that could be, that's, that's only one company. That doesn't take into account the 10 to 20 other brands you could be working with. So if you're in a position where you have a brand deal and you're landing $50,000, that's a long-term partnership, okay? 
So we, we need to think about how we can continue to make our money work for us for the long term. So to get into it, to get into it, when you are negotiating, you are negotiating not your value, but you want to communicate your boundaries and your standards that you set forth for your quality of life. So when we take into account like the corporate and the social media spaces, we're communicating our value based on our work experience, our education and our performance and many other factors. How, how well do you get along with the people who work around you, your colleagues, your peers? OK, so when you want to think about leveling up, you got to be real with yourself. So in the past 365 days, have you done some sort of self-assessment? Have you done some sort of self-evaluation? What is your process for understanding your performance and the results that you can drive home? If you don't know what you're capable of doing, and then you can't communicate it to the next person. If someone comes to you and they say, you know what? For um, for this job, we want to offer you 60000 and you know that's lowballing you because you've done your research, you know the median or average income, the industry standard as well, so you know that they're lowballing you. But you also think about the entire spectrum of your work when you're in the influencer space, you're thinking about your output because y'all think influ the influencer space is not just geared towards... Um, I have my nine to five hours. No, it's you working sometimes when you're laying in bed. It's you working, uh, trying to communicate with brands at some three, two in the morning. So keep all of that in mind. And so if you don't have the ability to do a, a self-assessment and evaluation, you're doing yourself harm. Because that mean, what you're telling me is that you don't know about your results, your performance. And when you're looking at performance, especially in the social media space, if you aren't investing in um, these programs that let you know your click through rate, your engagement rate, what is your how much traffic you bring to a particular product or a site, you need to be big on that. Brands are looking some brands are looking for those who don't know their value. And so that's why they say when the boys and girls, they come through and they're doing things for free. Because be, let's be clear on what um, an ad is. So hashtag ad is not free promo. Hashtag ad is not gifted product. It's you being paid in exchange for a service. That is an advertisement. So be, be real clear about that. You doing things for free is making it harder for the people who are trying to wow for respect and they want to get what they know they're owed. And being afraid, I'm telling you, the one thing, if you are afraid to articulate your value and, and, and be able to communicate what you are worth, that is something that you're going to have to explore on a deeper level. Because what about you and what you were raised, how you were raised or how you were condi conditioned, like who taught you that it's okay to settle or let someone tell you what you're worth? Now, outside, she's stopped working for free, period. It hurts you and the collective. Yes, there are so many people who are working for free. And, okay, we all know, and this is, a, this is a part of the little tea, we all know those people who are in a position where, you know, you ever get those group emails, people are responding to the full email. I highly discourage that. Please do not, if you don't um, reply all to um, where a company is asking about your rates, don't respond. I don't need to know that information. I don't need to know that information, especially if we don't have that type of rapport. So be careful about replying all with your rates and all your personal information. OK, please. And so when people do the reply all and you get to see what people are making and how they may be lowballing themselves or how they may have just talked themselves out of the opportunity to work with the brand, pay attention to that. Because when somebody does the reply all, you get to see, OK, not to be nosy, but they, you know, they just gave their rate. And then if like. 30 to 60 days pass and you never see that that um, influencer has worked with that brand, you have a clue as to what went wrong. Okay, okay. Um, so again, when you do your audit, you do your performance, you do your review, you know everything that you're able to produce. So you know your success rates in the corporate setting, you know your turnover rate, how fast you can get something done, your retention rates, your return on investment if you are an influencer, and you have to know your insights and your key metrics. A lot of you guys who may be new to this, they every social media platform is set up so that you know your metrics. 
so that you can better manipulate them and exploit those metrics to get what you need and by exploit i'm not saying like you know you want to take like the easy way out or try to cheat your way to the top no you learn how to work within those insights and those metrics so you can repeat that success over and over and over again and so failure to review to self-assess to audit your work sometimes the money that you're not getting is wrapped up in the fact that you haven't reviewed yourself you haven't been real with yourself and done that self-assessment my audience is made is make off of one swimsuit i don't i don't understand that save this lapses i'm i just got off work i'm tired i hate reply all yeah please don't do it so how do you communicate your value how were you groomed and or conditioned to let people know that you are aware of how much your worth be assertive be firm i think and we got to get out of this as black women sometimes we try to play coy we try to be nice we don't want to let people know that we are very much educated on what we are worth so we try to oh well you know um you know i this is my rate and then you allow somebody to talk you down y'all are letting people talk you down and talk you out of money that they have the ability to pay you i'm gonna say that again because it has it has to hit you tell someone your word and because they can people there are people there are trained people who are in their positions hr positions social media intern outreach positions who know the exact words to use to help you undervalue yourself they know it when you come in and you say, okay, I want $1,000, our budget only, um, we can only accommodate a rate of $750. How much money is that on the table? $250? Please stop. Please stop. If you say your rate, give them your rate and give them the evidence. Because... You, we can't refute anything if I have the evidence. If I have the analytics that say, for this video, I used Bitly, so I have my Bitly links, and it says I brought this much traffic to this particular channel. Let's be real about that. You can't, you can't tell me. Yeah, it's just $250, but $750 and $1,000, if you think about it, when it comes to taxes, you know what I'm saying? Keep, keep all of your money. Keep all of it be assertive be firm be professional use business jargon you should know terms like analytics and insights and metrics you should know what key insights to include on your media kit because if you are in the social media space the media kit is the equivalent of your resume of your cv you're giving evidence you are letting people know i've done my research on myself i've done my self-assessment i have audited my work i know exactly what my strong suits are I'm, I know what my output is. I know how fast I can get a project done. I know my publish dates. I can communicate that. I don't need reassurance in that area. And then state facts. Don't get up in these emails being emotional. It's business. It's not personal. If you don't know how to separate business from personal, you're gonna have a very big problem because sometimes people are banking on the fact that you are gonna have a lapse in judgment and you're gonna exercise, you know, poor business, you know, practices. No, you're gonna lose that cooth that you have. You're gonna lose that decorum. You're gonna get caught up in your feelings and you're gonna have a na you're gonna write a nasty email. You're gonna write you're gonna write a nasty email you're gonna be catty you may come off as aggressive they're banking on that because then when you do that they x you out and they always say it's very important how you handle um your business emails because the truth is you never know which companies are working within an agency which companies are networked to a higher entity because businesses get acquired all the time and there are people within these companies who they may work at one company as a social media outreach person, then they go on to another company and they have an even bigger position. But what those people will remember is how you treated them, how you responded to them, because people talk. Okay? Okay. Now, I don't negotiate my worth. 
that's 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 not what we do because i know i know what i'm worth boom so you don't negotiate your worth because you have to be secure and you have to be solid on that so the thing that you have to do is start negotiating the output if someone says if you say my budget is three thousand my rate is three thousand dollars let's say you say your rate is three thousand dollars right and they say, well, we, we only have a budget of $1,000. Do you want to leave money on the table? You have to think about it. Is this an opportunity that you could let go? Perhaps. So you have several options. You can agree to do something for $1,000. But if you want me to do a live stream, if you want me to do a YouTube video, if you want me to post, post an Instagram video and you want me to post an Instagram story, I can't give you that for $1,000. I can tell you what I can do. What I can do for $1,000, I can do a live. I can do a live. I can do a demo. I can give you an Instagram post. But for a YouTube video, we gotta, we gotta think about all of which goes into that. So be clear. And it's money. It's money. And don't you don't have to, um, and one thing I wanna discourage you guys, if, if anything, and this is big, don't feel like you have to price out every every task that you have. That's a mistake that I made. You don't have to get into the habit of saying, you know, an Instagram story costs this much. Um, an Instagram post, an in feed post costs this much, and a YouTube video costs this much. Like I said, you can wake up one day and say, you know what, I want, I just want to tell people it costs four thousand dollars to work with me. You could do that. You could do that. Because if your work speaks for itself, if you know your insights, if you know your metrics, you can do that. I'm in law and we are studying contract law. My advice, read the terms and conditions every word. Yes. And okay. In all of that, of course you want to read. You can always read because and look at your documents so you can refer back to them. But get in the habit of reviewing what those key deliverables are and communicating it to the brand that you're working with. Can you explain what a media kit is? I honestly don't know. A media kit is the equivalent of your CV your res well not your cv your resume you know your media kit is your stats at a glance your performance your results you know your return on investment those types of things th th that's what you want to boast about you want to let people know at a glance some of the key things what your core demographic is who's watching you i'm gonna be honest with you so when you come on Okay, so when you have an influencer who basically posts in like lingerie and post in bathing suits, um, sometimes with those types of accounts, you see that their demographic is largely men. Okay, and sometimes brands aren't looking for that because you want to tap into if you're a Victoria's Secret brand and you know you're trying to talk to an influencer whose core demographic is men, the men aren't going to be going to Victoria's Secret to buy the uh, product that you want to um, that you want advertised. So you know what I'm saying. So, and then in that instance, if you don't have an adequate amount of women or people who are of in interested in Victoria's Secret, it doesn't work out to be a good fit. And when things aren't a good fit, be comfortable saying no. So how do you say no? You always want to be warm. You want to remain open and receptive and use language that lets people know there's still an opportunity to work with this influencer or to hire this person because they've established their boundaries and that they need a base salary or a base rate of X. And we know that we have to we have to at least meet them here if we ever want to work with them. But the, the tricky thing is rates change salaries change based on experience and things that you have going on so if you find that a brand says no and then they come back to you and they want to give you like a rate that's closer to what you had like a year ago but they need to understand that rates change because you're growing what you should you should be growing in 365 calendar year you should be growing so your rates shouldn't say stagnant especially if your performance is improving let me see Oops, some deal rules. Yeah. And that's the thing. If you ever feel like you're in a position, if you ever feel like you're in a position 
where you have to start renegotiating key deliverables, you can do that. Instead of posting three photos, don't do a carousel, don't post that many photos. Is it gonna affect your metrics? If you've been posting, you know, in feed Instagram posts and you've always posted at least two to three photos, could it potentially affect it? Yes, because people have gotten accustomed to swiping when they go on your photos. So set parameters, set boundaries when you are saying no. You could say, I would love to facilitate this partnership. However, I am exploring partnerships that are paid opportunities. You know, it, and you know, you're, you're looking to continue to invest in your channel. And so, you know, be honest, be real, but have that decorum, have that couth, have the vocabulary, understand the jargon that you should use so that people still feel like they can reach out to you. Because if you're too, and it's not about being full of yourself and don't think that just because someone knows their worth and they're being assertive that they're full of themselves i know for one thing i'm not gonna put a wig on i'm not gonna put a wig on for 500 dollars. i'm not gonna put a wig on for a thousand dollars so okay so i talked for a while so if you guys have any questions you know, if you want me to revisit something, definitely let me know. But know your worth. Do not settle. And there is money out there. There's money. There's so much money out there. Even with this pandemic going on, because I hear so many horror stories about people who have been in positions where they, they thought they secured a, a business opportunity. They thought they secured a partnership. And then, you know what? They did all this work and they never got paid. So make sure you have your contracts. In 2020, we're not doing anything unless there's some sort of written agreement. Even if you want that written agreement to consist within the body of an email, you need to make sure that you have everything in writing, at least, if, if nothing else, the money, the amount that is going to be paid, when it is going to be paid. When you are doing your contract and the payment, how are you going to be paid? Some companies are paying via Zelle. Come on. Companies are companies are moving to stay, you know, abreast. They want to stay with the wave. They want to stay with what's current. They're paying cash app. Don't I don't want no brand to pay me via cash app. You know what I'm saying? That's for your hoes. So you know that's that. But then let them pay you via Zelle. That's strict straight through your bank. If you want them to pay you via PayPal, I had a company straight up tell me they're like, if you want us to pay you via PayPal, we do not pay for transaction fees you need to pay for my transaction fees if you want to do something via paypal and then you can always do a check you can always do a check don't be afraid of a check a live check and then just make sure that you if necessary you have the uh, relevant um forms you know that w9 make sure your information is in there anything over 500 dollars. be aware of the tax love be aware of the tax is it okay as a new oh let me read some questions facts i had a company tell me they wanted to not go through with the video and i made sure to still get paid okay this just happened this week what we're not doing you have to get paid you have to get paid in 2020 especially in this time where we are where we're in a government we're, we're dealing with a government who thought it was okay to just give people 1200 dollars and be like okay just survive no y'all need to make sure you're straight Oh, and make sure y'all are giving this video a thumbs up okay now i'm answering questions okay great information i've learned so much from your channel thank you you're welcome um what is it? sunny smile thank you is it okay as a new youtuber to do free business shout outs for small local businesses how small are we talking how small are we talking now let me tell you something and this is something that i want to drive home don't ever think no matter how big and or small you are Remember that you started somewhere and so it is always in your best interest to show your support. I am currently in the process. I have been working with this this my, this young queen. She's a black queen. I have been working with her for years. I have never asked her for a dime. She looks out for me and I appreciate that. However, I did have to tell her like it's been like it's been like um it's been like four years and I'm like, "Okay, we might we might want to start thinking about money." Okay? And so um I was happy that she approached me about the whole, you know, sponsorship and making it long term. And I really appreciated that. So I'm, I'm gonna help you. I told her and I was very honest. I'm like, these rates are considerably low, but it doesn't matter how big or small you are. Remember where you started and you would want someone to do the same thing. Now, when you're dealing with a small business, 
um shout outs you got to figure out how that works okay because if they're a smaller business if okay would you want to do a shout out on your youtube which is a bigger platform because can that small business um handle the possible increase or uptick in demand you got to be real with yourself about that like if you have a following of a million on youtube shouting out that small business could hurt them so make sure that they have the capacity so i always i'm an, an advocate for showing support across the board not just for big companies um great information i can use this for my makeup contracts oh yes oh and i'm sorry okay so this is another thing this is big thank you for mentioning makeup so for someone like myself you know i do want to start dabbling in makeup but your whole girl got like a whole allergy situation so you know what i've started doing <laughs> you can negotiate um like a skin test like a patch test like an allergy test i'm gonna need x amount of days but you're gonna have to pay me for this period of me testing your product even in the event it doesn't work out because honey i'll be breaking out and so i need to make sure i'm gonna be good because if something happens hair products makeup all of that how do you know how to price yourself without feeling like your price is too low or too high um how do you know how to price yourself okay so you can use um websites like social blue book you have the ability to use things like i don't know if grapevine is still in existence you have things like aspire iq so these are companies who have websites where their whole purpose is to you have to grant them access you have to allow them access to your um social media platforms and then they assess your analytics from there you can set the permissions for the website so don't think that you have to give them access to everything so you can set the parameters at which they access your insights and they kind of give you an idea of what you should be charging i say that you need to consult at least two social media platforms that assess your insights and then you can make your final decision on how to price yourself and create your rate based on those numbers given social blue book typically um gives the girls like on the higher end i'm that's how it was a few years ago i haven't used it to date but social blue, blue book usually gives the girls rates on a higher end and what i would say um uh with aspire iq um with them i've seen sometimes on the lower end so be you know what i'm saying make sure you're consulting um but think about the work like if you are a filmmaker but you're just starting out but the quality of your work is a one you can charge a thousand dollars if your work speaks for yourself if you're shooting in 4k if you are using a canon eos 6d mark whatever you know what i'm saying if your camera is like three thousand dollars love charge what is the value of your equipment what is the value the aesthetic what does your work look like with the quality stop thinking that your following defines you because it's some people on um instagram who uh have like 300 followers and they making racks period so don't play don't play how do you oh yeah i did that one new businesses on the market that i actually support with my own money and i like their service yep i'm aggressive behind payments that's not my fault you don't want the video anymore because of because you were out of bliss. that's a good one yes Ooh, y'all know these eyelashes be getting me yes deaf people under 100 i mean 1000 followers getting four figure deals you know what and here's the thing i'm gonna give you true tea I told y'all in my last live stream that we create ceilings for ourselves stop even in 2020 i believe that i have sometimes set ceilings around what i should be paid don't do that wake up one and let me tell you something if you are telling companies the rate that you actually want you're doing you're, you're doing yourself a disservice okay you're doing yourself a disservice if you want to be charged two thousand dollars and you're coming in the game I mean, what did i say if you want to be charged two thousand dollars or do if you want your rate to be two thousand dollars but you are telling companies my rate is two thousand dollars go over it go over it because what you what you find is that let's say you want your rate to be two thousand but you telling the boys and the girls i want my rate to be twenty eight hundred what if they say they're going to give you 2600 what have you done let me do what's the math you know it's 600 dollars, but you know, let me be dramatic you didn't got 600 dollars over 
but you did i say 2600 2800 basically you getting anywhere from six to eight always always go over always go over how do you know when a company is legit i've gotten dm from companies who are looking for ambassadors but the account look mad if he, if it if it looks too good to be true back up back up back up and i'm not gonna say something but i was um i was watching um some post on influencer pay gap i think that's the name of the instagram and let me just let you know some people were saying that certain companies don't pay it's sometimes it's because you didn't inquire about it being a paid opportunity or you didn't present or approach your argument about payment accordingly because I was reading something and I'm like, they definitely, they try to come like, oh, you know, we want to gift you. And I'm like, no, it ends up being a whole paid sponsorship, a whole, like a whole paid um, opportunity. And we're working together again. I'm like, and this is not a hair company. This is, this is not a hair company. So yeah, don't influence a pay guy. It gives you, um, it gives you at a glance like what's going on. But like I said, there are people trained to kind of talk you out of charging. You gotta be smarter than them. You gotta be sharper than them, and you gotta, you gotta, you gotta bring it. You gotta bring it with these companies. Cause like I said, this company literally hit me with an email like, "We loved what you did, and we want to work with you again." Payment, all of that, and I'm like, it's. It, it varies with each person so make sure you are good on who you are your value and what you deserve because let me just tell you something q4 is q4 is quarter four quarter four is one of the busiest times of year people are trying to make their um they're trying to pull any loss that they may have had in the previous three quarters they're trying to make it up in that last quarter so you know them black friday sales october november december it's going to be huge if you're not busy think about getting busy how do you keep your private life separate from your internet life? Um, discretion. Discretion. Um, and it's like, do you want, is your brand lifestyle, is your brand going to integrate parts of your personal life, your more intimate life? And if so, you need to be clear on your boundaries. I don't do too much of the private life because I don't want people thinking that they could tell me about my life. I'm from Jersey and we don't do that. Like, you know what I tell you and that's that. You can't so i'm very clear on like very strict boundaries you don't know me you can't run up on me you can't run up on me you can't run up on me so that's my energy but i'm different i know every some people like to be more personal but i'll be in the comment section reading stuff and people be trying to read people like they know them and that's that's why i just keep it business like girl you just said something and i never even met you talking about a boyfriend that I'm not even with or that you know this much about and it's like okay I heard you you don't know what you're talking about this company reached out to me one time and said I had to buy their product at full price then again at half price before they could you know what we're doing we're okay so anytime somebody tells you that they want you to buy a product and they'll reimburse you give me the money up front give me the money up front and we can discuss but we're not that's not a that's not a mutual exchange for me send me the product send me the product and be very careful about um fishing is big fishing is going to be real so all of these companies going up into your um into your emails they're clicking on your um email from instagram because you have a business account and they're clicking on the contact button so they can email you and send you something oh it's going to be going crazy let me just tell you the filters on my emails are ridiculous honey i'm going i think i'm gonna post this email that i got today um if you watching this and you sent it to me we're gonna talk um i'm not gonna talk to you but i'm gonna just talk about it in my instagram stories because people be thinking you stupid i'm like i'm like i'm not like i'm not like smart for play like um Yes, boundaries are a way of life. I'm very personal. People think they know you, and I don't have to be keyboard fighting behind your assumptions. Oh, my God. Some people, you know what? Boom. And here's another thing, and this is no shade, and I had to express this um, recently. Um, don't think that you can dictate what I do on my channel because if you feel like I'm not tapping into a certain topic, if you feel like I am not you know um fulfilling your need for whatever content that you believe you have the ability to create 
an entire forum, an entire space where you can curate the content to fit your individual needs. We have to, especially with black women, you can't dictate my flow. That's not for you. We didn't have enough of that. So what I want to do is what I want to do. If you want to get to know other sides of me, people follow me on my Instagram story and get, they get the laughs, they get the kiki, they get the jokes. But do I want to explore certain things so people see different facets? Yes. But for me, I have a lot of reservation because I'm extremely personal. Okay, yes, it's up from Jersey. Yes. Mm -hmm. Y'all be talking to people like they're not from Newark. Um, girl, you're so right. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not consistent for personal reasons, but what if you don't even have the numbers? Okay, so here's the thing, and this is something I'm going to get big on. Bulk, bulk filming, bulk production, that can help you be consistent. Rest, and when I say rest, you don't have to be consistent, like posting like every day, every other day on Instagram. Take about two to three days to yourself, but in those two to three days where you're not posting like back to back to back, you should be, you should be revving up and getting your content ready. If you don't have a schedule, work on it. For me, you know, I'm such a creative, like you know what I'm saying? I be trying to go with the flow and the feels of things. So it's like, if I don't feel it, like that's why I knew I was going to do a live. I don't want to post a video and have to edit it. So I'm going to just give the boys and girls a live. And those who want, you know, want this can take from it. Oh, and if you're in here, hit that thumbs up button because it's like 112 of y'all and it's 173 of y'all up in here. But anyway, just give yourself rest, but don't press yourself. But if in your downtime, you have the ability to bulk film, to bulk create content, Use that to your advantage so that even when things come up, you have content revved up and ready to go. And if you can't give your best in your downtime, step away. Like, it's the lighting, you know, today was crazy. The weather was crazy. It was like cloudy. It was rainy. It was sunny. I would be so pissed if I was trying to record a video using natural light because it would be all over the place. I don't like my videos to look like that. Sometimes they do because you just can't help it. But don't sacrifice your content. The, don't sacrifice the quality of your content just to like say you did something it's okay to lay low and then blow up not blow up like that but like you know you know post your content i see this all the time comparing and comparing how other another influencer does things you know i used to bulk create but after a while i don't feel like posting old videos cheryl so that's a great that's a great thing um so you know what and this is something that I want to say, especially because I know a lot of black women watch my channel. Be okay with like evolving past the time when you've created something because you even in what you created, someone can still benefit from it. So don't ever feel like what you're contributing on an artistic level can't benefit someone else just because you don't see the value in it anymore because it's older. Give it, give, give it to the world, let it go and let them handle it. And that's like one of the best things that I'm still trying to like get cool with, but don't undermine what you're doing because it's older content or it's not where you are mentally so give it to the world it's your art be sensitive about it take your time but give it to the world because you got something done um i love you for this this is some real black girl magic you know i try but um any other questions because i again we have about like 15 or so more minutes of questions so I'm, I'm trying to get the juicy ones um yeah and oh also when you are setting up your channel think about what you're trying to do like you know what i'm saying are you tr like what's your vibe like are you trying to do hair are you trying to do lifestyle are you trying to now blend the two worlds because you creatively you might be having a block it's okay to want to venture out and do other things so give yourself the space to do that but also be open to when you want to venture into a new kind of like industry or, or new like niche sometimes that requires like a pay cut because you don't you don't have the you may not have the analytics or the insight that um you know can evidence that you have the capacity to like um influence consumers to purchase to buy in that particular realm so don't give it up but i would say you know pursue it give your best people will catch on give them time how does great info thank you you're welcome jacqueline how does it feel to be a black woman that made it did your mindset change from when you first started i don't 
I made it. I, I didn't know I made it. Did, did I make it? We all have the capacity to make it. I think for me, like the biggest thing for me was graduating college. Like that was, huh. that, okay, that's like a, you know what, I made it. You know what I'm saying? Like boom, because now, now on paper, you, you can't play me. Like I have a little something and you can't play me. You can pay me. Um, but then coming into this, I was so like uncertain because I started my channel when I was in college and you go through so much, you're evolving so much, you are learning so much. And I think about when I started, like if you look at my um, older videos, look at my older videos, look at, look at what I was, what I was giving the boys and girls and look at what I'm doing now. Um, you have to break yourself down like mentally emotionally to really grow so that's the hardest part um because like i told y'all in the beginning when i was doing stuff uh doing viral videos and getting paid like no money didn't know my worth i used to watch you back then oh, thank you so much the hearts and cake 90 make sure you check out our channel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let me see. I'm a beauty channel and my main focus is hair, but I do post makeup videos and I am thinking about also posting some press on nail videos. I know a lot of people say choose one. No, beauty is beauty. The, think about think about who you are as a woman. Think about who you are as an individual. You have so many different interests. You don't have to tailor it to hair. There may be the, the viewer retention could not be where you want it for your other like your top niche content, but don't like not do it because you might do it. What if you blow up? whole time you was holding yourself back don't do it um people be like oh you know do your nails and i'm like uh you know nails i don't want to do it but like let's say i decide to do a press on nail video right or no i'm sorry what if i decide to do press ons and i find your video and i shout you out and then boom like you know what i'm saying you know you never know don't don't hold yourself back what if you have the drive to start a youtube but afraid to face the world listen I stand before you with flaws and I'm still out here giving I'm giving content um I don't want to say flaws we all have our imperfections but working through them it only makes you better it makes you more confident and knowing that you can still reach people in your ability to just not be perfect because no one is perfect but you're still reaching people and people still gravitate towards you that's magical like don't like stop sleeping on yourself like stop some people want to remind you of your imperfections but like think about the fact that you're still doing what you're doing with whatever they believe you shouldn't be doing because you have whatever thing that they think makes you less of or something but you're you're, you're still you're still you're still doing it so get out of your head get in your bag get in your bag means like talk to yourself in the mirror be real that mirror conversation got to be real like listen you know what this time last year you was posting like two to three videos a month what are you doing what are you doing what let's amp it up this year okay so let's post let's try to post 10 videos a month that's extreme you know what i'm saying i was not posting 10 videos a month i think last month i posted like 12 and let me just let me just tell you something this is the true thing we're not gonna post 20 videos if you if you can't let's let's set like a, a baseline of like at least 10,000 views because the algorithm the algorithm be it be cheating it, it, it does crazy things but if you're posting 20 videos and you find that about five to seven of your videos videos performed over 10,000 or over 20,000 like because you you got to assess your output because that's fatigue that's fatigue and i don't like that i don't like that i don't like that i want if i'm over if i'm over twenty thousand, i'm like okay because you you may hurt yourself by overproducing and you're underperforming let me say that again you may hurt yourself by overproducing when you're underperforming so in in you in you in your in you assessing that you're underperforming dial it back don't continue to to try to upkeep that it's about how can i make this better what were people tuned in you know like overproduction is not it rest is lit like period overproduction that's what we convince ourselves to say that we did something so we could say oh last month i posted 20 videos but how many videos did well 
Because if you post a video that only got 5,000 views, what was your click-through rate? If that click-through rate was not through the roof, we have to study it. We have to do it over again. Because you, you miss something. And it's okay. We all miss stuff. So don't get in the habit of overproducing and, and you're normalizing underperforming because we, we want everything to hit. Can you be successful with an annoying voice? Most certainly, but what is annoying? Because what you perceive as annoying may be beautiful to somebody else. And that's the beauty of putting yourself in a platform where you're not just exposed to one person. It's a ton of people quantity versus quality okay you are very wise period <laughs> oh, thank you thank you oh. so another thing i just want to make sure i say this because if you think that like because okay so then like if you if you find yourself in this like stage of like overproducing what, what's the what's the point because you got to ask yourself like what is what is the point what am i trying to prove to myself or what am i trying to show to my audience what am i trying to do in that moment like what's the point of it just to say that you did it because hmm. you don't run a mile every day just to say you know what oh i did it because your body composition starts to change you're doing it for more than just saying that you did it and you have to examine that because we want rest because 2021 you know i've been laying low you know what i'm saying i might give you 12 videos a month i might come back and calm down give you like seven eight videos the next month give yourself balance but it has to be for a purpose because what are we trying to do in 2020 i'm trying to do some things you know what i'm saying i've been i've been i've been busy there's some things I don't like that I want to, you know, tap into. But so that's why I'm laying low, but working hard and being strategic. And you are dope AF. Thank you. Wow. God bless y'all. You know, I do appreciate that. What about doing a, a business via Instagram? Make your business your business. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to know that you posting plates of food for sale on Sunday. But then, um, you know what I'm saying? Then you posting like memes and then you're posting like your homecoming dress and then you're like um then you posting like you and bae doing a prank like it's com it's conf it's upsetting me in my home because i don't know what to expect when people come onto my instagram let's just look at my instagram because i didn't do this this is a part of auditing you have to audit yourself if you don't know what you look like to people who come to your page you're not you're not prepared for most people it just takes time to be seen alicia nicole but there's a lot you can do to optimize your videos yes um so when i go look at my page i'm like boom what, what's going on for me like what do people see like what what do people see when they come here it's like okay damn she liked to be her face she she likes to lay a wig she didn't came a long way because you know them wigs was running off her head in the past so she took her time to learn how to make how to lay them wigs Ooh, let me... she took her time and then what she she you know she's she's always been into looking cute that's been her thing and she loves a good lipstick okay and she loves pink that's something when you come to my page you can tell i like the color pink so but do you want and so now i'm at the point where i'm like we gotta we gotta give the people a little bit more because yes i'm you know yes i'm for the looks but i'm also about the intellect so you know just integrating that um do you have people asking you for help with becoming a youtuber and social media yes and one of the things um the powerful things that i am just really moving in you know as you know as a almost 30 year old woman learning my boundaries and being able to communicate communicate that to people because as much as i want to help you if i tried to help everybody that fell into my dms or sent me an email do you know how inundated and overwhelmed that would be thinking that i have to give people answers detailed answers to help them that's not my responsibility because the same way that I made these notes for this live stream, that means I'm serious. That means that I want the value, the value that I pour into this, I want it to be reflected in the work that I've done prior. So you got to come out of asking people and start with your research, because I can tell based on your research, whether I'm, I can tell based on your question, whether you've done your research. 
if you come at me like oh um so what does it mean to make a contract tell me about a term in a contract that is confusing to you because then i can help you because that lets me know that signals to me she's asking me about paypal transaction fees and whether she can negotiate that in her contract to me it sounds like she's she's aware now i remember 2017 when we collabed and you told me about ftc disclosures i really appreciate that and let me tell you something and i appreciate you for appreciating that one of the things that i am all about um if you if once we establish a good rapport and you really like want to talk to me I'm gonna really talk to you, but I'm not. I don't always pat you on the back because I'm gonna say if I'm working with you, you should you should consider doing this because in anybody that I'm tied to, especially a black woman, as much as I know I'm willing to share it, if you are receptive and you seem open to it, I'm gonna share that information. People don't know about FTC disclosures, but this whole thing with the um fire festival that was rooted around FTC disclosures and people's whole lives they they lost money. Some people had to do time. It's a big thing. Just because it doesn't impact you in the now, it, it becomes more serious. So be ser when somebody is giving you something, when someone is paying you for something, be serious. And like I said, an ad, I think sometimes people want to see hashtag ad in their caption. But Instagram now has it where if you do hashtag ad, it comes up in your branded content and you can you can select which brand you're working with so be bold if you're bold enough to put that hashtag ad be bold enough to say which company you're doing it with now like i said sometimes ads are it's not technically an ad it's just a deliverable so that's how it is for me sometimes it's like a, a deliverable like i mean not that that's not but it's just like i don't know that's that's a little bit more but just be real about the ads like when I work with um, Anna Luisa, I was like, because, you know, I was like, you know what, I'm getting into reels. So like, you know, but a part of that, if you do a hashtag ad, you have to you have to link it to the brand. So I thought it was to put out lots of videos so you get seen that there is traffic to your page. OK, so here's the thing. I'm going to be real with you. Like, this is this is the big thing for me. So. I look at my um, follower count on Instagram and I'm honest with myself. I'm like, I have 44K, I have 44,000 followers. And so I'm like, do I want to post and then just have content that's just like underperforming for the sake of overproducing? I don't want to do that because that hurts your metrics. Because then when you sign up to a website that analyzes your analytics, they're going to be pulling poor content with high performing content. Don't give um don't give a social media um analytical um database the ability to lower your rate like because of poor performance because you're overproducing be intentional so it's like do i post a little bit less i would say i try to do every other day but the thing is i put you can tell i put so much more into my content like so much more so much more and it's obvious so that when these websites are analyzing my analytics they have higher quality content to pull from so i can charge more does that make sense thanks for sharing all the information on brand ambassadors yes ig reels is where it's at not much of an algorithm on there and easier to be seen yep so the thing is because you if you can negotiate doing an ig reel for a paid sponsorship it has the ability to perform better so you can charge more like be intentional since like that was a gem i just dropped okay that was a gem i just dropped if you know that your content performs well on a certain um feature manipulate it you know what i'm saying continue to use it so you can you can reap the benefits if you see that your instagram reels are doing well if the average view count of your instagram reel is like twenty thousand, that's money or let's let's make it more realistic for the people who are smaller maybe micro nano influences if you know that your instagram reels get an average of anywhere from three to five k that's money Mm -mm -mm. and yes has uh jess monique thomas yes i'm used to seeing jess the dragoness but i know i see the name change 
I know some people on Instagram that try to at least get on the explore page. So, um, if you, okay, if you're going to, okay, so the thing is, you're going to be on the explore page. It's just about how long and how long it's going to circulate. So it can live anywhere from 24 to 48, but it can still go beyond that. It can still, because, um, and here's the thing, it's based on, so how long you live on the explore page is also, I think, contingent upon how people share or interact with your content. So for example, I don't know if y'all could, if y'all could see this, but this video right here, has anybody, this video right here, I always reference this video because it's been shared so much and people there are still pages still sharing it so I have the likelihood of popping up on someone else's explore page who's been in the reach of another Instagram page who shared this video you get what I'm saying I hope that makes sense that's my favorite video too let me tell you something thank you all I did and you know what let me let me tell you about what I did I started realizing that when I'm in front of my window at a certain time, at a certain point of the day, at a certain angle, the lighting be hitting. It hits my highlight, you know, and you know, you use a little filter. Sometimes you can, sometimes you don't. And, but the key here is, okay, the key here, that lace was gone, okay? And so I just had to show people, I'm like, I don't want people to think that I'm just posting a wig and it only looks good because it's, it's an edited uh, photo. So when you post a video, you help people believe in you. Sunlight is the best light. Oh my, for photos, most definitely. I've been binge watching your content since. That style looks so damn, okay? Okay, and that was my first, okay. So, tr true tea. So that video, so this video here, this one, this was the first one that I did for Asteria hair. Do you know how that made me feel? The first thing that I did for them, it was a high performing collaboration. So it's better for me. It's better for me because then I can leverage the performance of that video alongside any other video. But I think for Asteria hair, like I think my average view for those videos was like 60K on YouTube. That's that means something. Can we get a video on your current waist training and workouts? Oh, there is something I want to do. I don't want to say what it is, but it's in preparation for the holidays. So I might, I might have something for you. Just, just give me a little moment. Oh my God, people are texting me. You know, I love your lipstick. All of the um, makeup details are in the description box. Makeup details my um lounge my lounge wear if you want to shop my wardrobe i've also heard of influencers charging non-refundable deposits like how hairstylists charge booking fees non-refundable so here's the thing some okay when you are um doing a partnership so you have the ability to safeguard yourself because a part of negotiating is safeguarding your process you are you're um protecting yourself so before you do any work because you want to get paid to start a project get paid to start a project so that's the equivalent of like a non-refundable deposit because it doesn't come back to you if we if you decide not to move forward that money is still mine but you need a contract or you need something in writing, an agreement in writing to be able to safeguard yourself. And that's a part of negotiating. <laughs> Just the Dragoness is no more the rebrand though. <laughs> that's it, you gotta rebrand. My plan um, was to use my own name and start integrating a new realm of products and broaden my sponsorships with my own name, period. Okay, and so here's the thing. So what Jess just said is that, okay, sometimes when you rebrand, you can lose people. That's the reality. But when you rebrand and you come back stronger, you have more of an intention and an understanding of the brand that you want to project, that image, um, who you want to be. And so you have to be more intentional about how that translates. So for me, that looks like you want to be a little bit more personal. You want to be a little, a little bit more intimate. And it's okay to do that. And so I love that you're now in that new phase and I wish you the best. Be intentional, be strategic, 
um, and do and do something different. Don't do what you did with your previous name. Switch switch the game up on them. You know what I'm mean? give them give them what they want. Um, I love when people use their names as their brand name. You know what? Mm. Mm. I see. I see. I like some so many of your videos. Can't choose a favorite. Thank you, Tia. Thank you. I quit my job as a stylist to level up. Tired of being a stylist. Oh, so you were a stylist and you quit? Can we talk about that? That's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. If nothing else, the education. The education is important. Get the education because then you you could you could ask for more. You know what I'm saying? Let you start getting these sponsorships, these brand deals. You could um you can then ask for more because you have the um the actual education, the actual experience and background. That's more money. Don't sleep. Hello, Tilia, Telia, Tilia. Yes, very big. Um, okay, any last, I'm going to do like two more questions. So, the best time to take your photos is when, whenever the natural light, sun, wait, what? The best time to take your photos is when, wherever the natural sunlight is shining in your house, take your pictures. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then also, if you find that you are in this influencer space, be real with yourself. Like, always think about the next steps. Always. Um, because of everything that went on, um, that went on this year, girl. Because y'all know I'm a science geek. At the end of the day, I'm a science geek. So I, I was looking into public health. Girl, you know how much I be sitting on epidemiology? You know, so. I'll go back to school. You know, I'll go back to school. I'll go back to school. So, yeah, I was looking at public health. That's always been an interest in me. I took a class in college. It is, I mean, it's devastating when you look at trends and you look at stats of, like, disease. But it's, like, it's, I mean, it's interesting to me. Pink, you are artwork, your artwork behind you is gorgeous. Where'd you get it? This is from Wayfair. Y'all you want to see? Wayfair. Wait, wait, wait. Can a brother borrow this? wonder if people who use their real name deal with more privacy invasion once they blow up so what some people do is you can create a name that sounds like a real name but it's not your name like you know what i'm saying it's, it's you being crafty it's you being personal but i know um that's something you're gonna have to deal with but in doing that you can let's say you have a child like and you have a house and you don't want the house to like be a part of your public records especially if your child if you, you put put the deed in your child's name or something like well maybe not the child's name but like you know there's other ways to do it to protect yourself but unfortunately there's a lot of things that are public record so you just got to be very careful if you want to um have things under a business name that is completely unassociated with your um government name it's like you know your business name that you know your dba that people may not know anything about that's an option but people are nosy y'all they nosy hey i really love your wig looks pretty man acts so check the description box for all of the hair information create a pseudonym yep I'm an RN and you are absolutely right. Listen, I know, but you know what? Okay, so like I said, with this whole time, with the whole pan, you know, with the whole pan, I'm going to call it pan. Be careful because if you were in the RN, if you were in that space, like think about the fact that sometimes you, you th this is, it's a huge risk being an RN, but especially in this time where you could be potentially putting your family at risk. Some people don't have the option to isolate, to quarantine. So just think about that. Um, 
but I think in still knowing it for me, I just like to, I like the research aspect of it, the looking at trends. That's why I was looking into public health. It's just public health is super interesting because you could just get to see like how historically the U.S. has been dropping the ball. LLC is the best way to protect yourself. Yep. Yep. But in it, but the thing about that is if there is any record of you putting that, like, so let's say you work with a company, just think about how um, certain forms continue to change hands, even though this is a confidentiality notice, like forms can change hands and people can still see your information. So you got to think about like internally who may be seeing your information and though you could keep that private, maybe you might want to create an LLC that is completely unaffiliated with like your business affairs and boom, you do that. <laughs> you are a nerd for real let me tell you something i am i knew i knew you know what i'm saying like i like hair i like i love hair i love makeup let's be clear but like put me around some some science people you see a different side of me you be like wow she's like really into it like you don't look science people are weird like just as a whole like the world that um, I gave up patient care before the pan. Okay. Come on now. Come on now. And, you know, I've been doing some reading with the way that they're treating. You know, when you're diagnosed, you're not thinking about the psychological effects. A lot of these people are because of being on, um, being on ventilators, what that does to you um the uh, hallucinating how you're treating hallucinations and, and and you know sometimes suicide ideation Ooh, i said that word up in here let me get you know let me not get too deep but hopefully they don't block this uh, video because i said that but the psychological impact of like being on a ventilator for an extended period of time what that does is to the mind the drug i dang i can't talk about it because never mind I have a degree in healthcare administration, so I know the healthcare system be dropping the ball. Okay. First of all, look at, okay. First of all, look at, um, first of all, Europe really shocked me. Um, it makes you think about places that you may want to potentially live because, you know, a lot of the boys and girls, you know, are trying to, like, pursue other places to live, especially with everything that's going on here. But then when you think about the healthcare system and how it's kind of not really set up, it's giving, like, it's giving underdeveloped vibes, it's that's not good okay and the increase in mental health care you know what that's the word i should have used because you know me i just be trying to put it plainly so y'all be careful we we are about to go into flu season if you think you saw something i told the boys and girls you need to go shopping i would say monday through wednesday honestly don't be in there on no thursday friday don't be in there the first of the month um get your mask get cloth masks now we are moving into to the time where you can get cloth masks and figure out if you want to go to the polls and think about what you could potentially be enduring and how you could be putting yourself at risk and that exposure that you may have to bring that home so do you have a plan you know in case you start feeling under the weather do you have a plan where you could keep yourself away from your family in the event because sick you might be clean but to me i think I'm a germaphobe. I have a little bit of OCD and it's like this person I was um girl I was walking and like this guy was like trying to like shake my hand and I'm like you know what I'm saying I get it but it's like coat like you know what I'm saying I had to put the glove on I had to put the glove this is a sock but I had to put the glove on the I'm like honey I don't I don't trust I don't trust I don't trust you to wash your hands period the ER, the ER was slammed this weekend yep I'm telling you, and you don't know who has the flu and you don't has you don't know who has the other thing. I'm telling y'all, please be careful. Cases are already surging in Europe. It's only literally a matter of time. People are still trying to travel, you know, live their best life. Shout out to you. Um, be safe, but understand the risks. For real. You are you are amazing, a talented, creative, amazing person. Keep up the good work. Have a wonderful, amazing week. Thank you so much, April. I appreciate that. You have a great week. You stay safe. 
Again, visit whenweallvote.org. Visit vote.org. Um, there's a debate going on in about 15 minutes. And I did want to say this to those of you who are kind of like overwhelmed with the process of voting or you don't really, you know, you don't think you're going to understand the debate. The New York Times is actually going to be breaking things down real time, fact checking things. So if you want to be in the know, if you want to be better prepared, if the language kind of scares you, don't turn away or don't turn a blind eye. This involves you and your future. So I like that the New York Times is putting the boys and girls on so they can give you the facts and give you the tea so you can be informed. Um, so y'all take care, wash your hands, get a cloth mask, um, and do your shopping Monday through Wednesday, honestly. And I would say during um, midday, right before lunch, give me like an 11 give me a 10 30 11 i'm trying to beat the lunch crowd i'm not trying to go after work hmm. yes please be careful and not only that you might have the antibodies of 19 but you don't get 19 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i go at 8 a.m when they open so some some um like i know whole foods they have senior they have senior citizen you know the senior citizen setup so be careful of that um and start wearing gloves when you go to the store when flu season kick in put some gloves on period put some gloves on because even if you use one hand and whatever hand you have the glove on don't touch other stuff on you if you are wearing the glove and throw your mask out especially if you have the disposable ones throw them out throw them out throw them out get you a cloth mask that you can wash you can put in the washing cycle even if you have to hand wash it put a little bit of um put you some you can put vinegar you can put apple cider you well, not apple cider vinegar. you can put vinegar distilled vinegar you could put a little bit of alcohol you could put you know of course your detergent you could do a little baking soda figure out what you want to do but clean those masks and thank you to all the essential workers oh my goodness yeah new york gonna be a mess okay new york i'm just i'm ready to cry so y'all be good yes as a psychologist people are so scared and anxiety and the d the d word is increasing people being in the house oh my gosh and check check on your loved ones before i get out of here check on your loved ones check on your friends check on that friend that you haven't seen posting on social media or that you haven't heard from a simple i love you i was thinking about you and i wanted to make sure you're okay keep it simple check up on people because 2020 check up on people and show them let them know don't don't you know show them that you care if you got to show up show up but all right guys go watch the debate register to vote take care of yourself and um we're a mass we're a mass okay we're a mass Bye.